Hey y'all, it's Megan. If you're returning to my channel, welcome back. And if you're new, welcome aboard. So I'm rocking my Haunted Mansion Ghost Host hat today because A, it's my favorite hat in the entire world. And B, today, I'm sure you can tell by the title, but I finally did a thing. I finally watched Hocus Pocus. I am 27 years old. The movie is almost as old as me. And I have finally watched it for the very first time in my life. I wrote in my my little ideas journal that I keep for my, my channel. Of course it has Mickey on it. Um, I wrote down some stuff while I was watching it. Just like little stream of consciousness kind of things as I was going. But eventually I got so into it that I completely stopped writing. Um, and you can tell that I stopped like kind of halfway through the movie where I'm just like I'm not writing anymore and I'm just watching. So... I am going to kind of do a two-part thing. I'm going to tell you what I thought of the movie. Spoiler alert, I liked it. Then I'm going to do a little, like a, an abbreviated history and uh, fun facts video. I'm not going to go all into it. I'm just going to list a couple of fun facts that I found out after I watched the movie. I did a little research on it because I didn't want to do it beforehand to spoil it. So I waited until after. And so, yeah, that's what we're doing today. We're talking about Hocus Pocus. So for the first part of this video, I'm just going to tell you some of the stuff that I wrote down um, as I was watching. And so the very first, I was like, oh, the sisters look a little older and like rougher than I thought they were. Like I've seen pictures of the Sanderson sisters. Uh, I didn't know who they were or what their deal was, but I've seen pictures and I was like, I didn't think that that's what they look like. So the first thing, like they, they first show up and I'm like, dang, they looking rough. Um, and then of course, a few seconds later, I get my answer. They needed to steal some youth from, from a, a child. So I was like, oh, that's, that's why they looked a little rough. Now I understand. So that question was answered. And then the next thing I figured out was Binks was a kid. Like all the time, I thought Binks was just a cat. He's just a cat. But no, Mr. Thackeray Binks was a, was a human and he got turned into a cat. So I feel bad for him. But also if I had to be turned into an animal, like I'd definitely want to be a cat bonus points if it's a black cat because those are my favorites so yeah i learned there, there's two things already that i've learned and we're like maybe five minutes into this movie moving on to like the present day stuff um when we first meet max and he goes through the graveyard to get home and he meets up with jay and ice or ernie whatever his actual name is um my, my, the only thing i thought in that scene was why do i dress like jay like this movie is 26 years old literally came out 26 years ago and that is still my aesthetic right now like the the chains the boots the flannel that is what i dress like more days than not uh so i don't know if it has that style like come back around or am i just stuck in the 90s i don't i don't know but yeah like i totally jay has like a soft spot in my heart because we share a closet apparently then Max gets home, and can we talk about the fact that he has the most awesome room, like, in the history of rooms? He's got, like, a whole set of stairs in there. The place is freaking huge. I didn't even realize at first that it was his bedroom. I'm like, oh, look, those are cute stairs. That's in his room. Like, I have not ever had, like, a cool, fun, eclectic-looking room like that with fun, character-y things in the house. Uh, the closest thing was when I was real little and my closet opened into the attic and I thought that was super fun. I was going to just like go crawl up in there um, until my parents told me not to do that. So hopes and dreams dashed. But yeah, like who gets this awesome room when you're like 16? Okay, so now Max and Danny are out trick-or-treating and they get to, is her name Allison? The girl's house. They get to her house and they're like, man, look at this nice house. And they just walk right in. Who, who raised y'all? Are you, were you raised in a barn? Who just walks into someone's house? Like I understand and on Halloween, you know, you, you go up to strangers' houses, but I have never once just like opened someone's door and pranced right in and been like, oh, hey, hey, a party. Let me join on in. Especially not as like, how old are they? 16 and like 10? No, stop. This is kind of where I stopped writing. I, I was like, oh my gosh, I love these costumes. And I was, and then when Sarah, Sanderson like ate that spider bug thing. I was like, oh my gosh, like that's nasty. What, I wonder what that was that she actually ate. And that was the last thing I wrote. Um, and then after that, I was just watching the movie and enjoying. So I'm gonna use that piece of whatever I wrote to transition into the fun facts about the video. And apparently it was a spider and she actually ate it. Sarah Jessica Barker has said that she, as Sarah Sanderson, she actually ate that spider in real life. So, ew. 
but uh, yay for being true to character. My camera died. And did I bring an extra battery with me? Of course not, because I'm ill-prepared. So <laughs> switching over to the phone, sorry, we are way m less stable and uh, not as good a quality, but here we are. I'm gonna, we're gonna keep going. Back to my, my fun facts. The movie had a budget of $28 million which is a lot of money, um, and it actually only made back $8 million that first weekend and $39 million overall. It made $39 million. So it did make a profit, but it has become like a cult favorite, and it's become way more popular in recent years than it ever was on its like initial run. Uh, I don't know why that is. Uh, some of y'all have mentioned in the comments on my, my last video, and we, we kind of talked about it. I guess it's probably the involvement in the parks. Uh, you know, Disney World has had the Sanderson sisters do their show at uh, Mickey's Not So Scary and things like that, and the, the songs have been everywhere. And so I think that the Disney parks probably have made it more popular than it initially was, but I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, it made $39 million, so it did make a profit, uh, just not a huge success initially. So this movie was released in 1993 and it was released in July because they wanted it to be separated from the other holiday release for that year which was The Nightmare Before Christmas which was getting released closer towards the end of the year so they wanted to spread them out some. So Hocus Pocus got released in July which may have something to do with the fact that the initial opening weekend they didn't do so hot. I mean eight million dollars is still eight million dollars but you know that's not that much when you think about what movies make on opening weekends when they are very successful. Um, the fact that it was July. I know that we all like getting in the spirit of the spooky season as early as possible, but maybe sometimes in July is a little too early, so maybe people were just like not feeling it. Uh, but because it was in 1993, who was like the big heartthrob of the time? Not quite yet, I guess. He, he took a few more years, but Leonardo DiCaprio was initially the one that they wanted to play Max. And I'm not gonna lie, probably would have watched Hocus Pocus earlier if I knew Leonardo DiCaprio was in it but he turned it down to be in What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Um, so that was why we had Omri Katz. That's, I think that's how you say his name. Uh, that, that's who played Max. While we're talking about actors, let's just go ahead and, and keep talking about them. Um, Omri Katz, like he kind of retired from acting not too long after Hocus Pocus. I, I think his last acting credit was in the early 2000s. So he was in his 20s when he retired from acting. And since then he has been a hairdresser in LA. So he splits his time between LA and Israel and he is just a, a hairdresser and he's just gone on and done his thing and uh, didn't need to stay with the acting thing. Jason Marsden, which you may not initially think of when you're talking about Hocus Pocus because you never see his face. He is the voice of Binks in both human and cat form. Um, he is not the face actor that plays Thackeray Binks as a human, but he does do the voices for both because they wanted it to be a consistent voice. They liked the look of the kid who played Binks' physical being um, as a human and Lord help me, I can't remember his name. I'll write it down right there so you, um, you can actually know his name. But um, he couldn't do the old English accent that they wanted Binks to be able to do, so they got Jason Marsden to do both voices. Now, why they didn't just have Jason Marsden be the physical character too, I don't know. Maybe he had a, he didn't have the look they were going for. But you recognize Jason Marsden from, he was in Boy Meets World, that's like what I know him from the best. He's also Max Goof from a Goofy movie, and Tino from The Weekenders. Any other like late 90s, early 2000s kids watch The Weekenders? That was my jam when I was like 10. So he, he played Tino in that, so that's what you recognize him from, probably, is that those voices, Tino and Max Goof, but he also was on Boy Meets World, and he's been in a ton of other things, but those are the main, like, Disney things that he was involved in. Doug Jones is another name that you may or may not recognize. He's not big in Disney, in the Disney sphere of acting, but he is a crazy talented actor, and he played Billy Butcherson, the, you know, the guy who loses his head periodically, the reanimated, uh, Billy. So he is well known for being an actor that is very tall. I think he's six three and a half, which is, you know, get that half in there. But he's super tall, super skinny, and he's kind of like an awkward lumbering kind of guy. And so he plays characters that are very much physical characters. And Billy was one of his earlier roles. It wasn't his earliest, but it was one of his earlier roles. And you kind of see how that physical comedy is, is developing in how he portrays Billy. But he is known for wearing crazy prosthetics as well. And one of his most well-known roles was the Pale Man from 
Pan's Labyrinth, and he also played um, the Fauno character in that, but he was that creepy, crazy guy with the, the eyeballs on his hands, and um, so that's the kind of acting that he does. And he has said that the moths, we got a lot of bugs going on in this, in this movie, um, the moths that come out of his mouth, those were real. He had them in his mouth, and there was a, a block on the back of his throat uh, to keep them from going anywhere but out of his mouth. That he couldn't swallow them, um, but uh, when he opened his mouth, they had nowhere to go but to fly out. So, ew. But yay for character commitment, once again, with the bugs. My last thing about the actors is one more thing about Sarah Jessica Parker, um, and <laughs> it's my favorite thing. She thought that the harness that she used for the flying scenes was so comfortable that instead of, you know, when they had to change cameras or if they wanted to, you know, they had to take a break and like check something and they, you know, they called to, to cut, then she was like, I'm gonna just stay up here. Don't bother bringing me down. It's comfy. And she would stick a magazine up inside the back of her corset during scenes. And she'd just pull that sucker out. She'd just lay there and, and read her magazine. A couple of quirky things about the movie itself. Um, the scenes where Billy loses his head, you know, they're done with a lot of comedy. Um, and there's actually a separate actress who is credited as the headless Billy because she had to be a lot shorter to not have the head on like I mentioned, Doug Jones is six foot three and a half. So they had a shorter person who would have, you know, their head taken off. So that character is pretty much non-existent in some of the releases in the UK. When they aired it on TV, they edited out all of the scenes where Billy loses his head. Not sure why. It's not like it was gruesome or graphic or anything like that, but they did. And so then there were some like continuity problems. People were like, okay, well, why is Danny out of the protective circle? Like, why is she over here? What's going on? So uh, it caused some issues. And that was, I believe, just like one or two times. So they aired it like that. And then they were like, okay, this is part of the story. We got to keep it in there. One other thing that I thought was interesting, and I actually meant to write this down, but I didn't. As I was watching through, I was like, man, they say the word virgin and like reference virgins a lot for a Disney movie. And I was like, that, this is, they're making like virgin jokes and, and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, that's, that's interesting. You can tell how times have changed. Um, and as I was doing research, I found out that that is something else that people notice. And it is not actually the first Disney movie to mention virgins. The first Disney movie to do that was Dragon Slayer in 1981. No idea what that movie's about. Never seen it. I'd never heard of it. So maybe I'll have to find that one somewhere. I am at my library right now. That's I'm getting ready to head in there and find some find some Halloween movies hopefully. So maybe I'll see if I can find Dragon Slayer somewhere on Netflix or Amazon or at my library. I'm not sure. Might have to might have to check that one out, see what that's all about. But yeah, that, those are my fun facts and my opinions about Hocus Pocus. I really liked it. I thought it was super cute. Had a very Halloween Town vibe to me, which is another one of those Disney Channel movies that everyone has seen a million times. Um, and also, Billy reminded me a lot of the mummy character from Under Wraps. Anyone else seen that? I loved that movie. That one, it was Under Wraps, Don't Look Under the Bed, and Phantom of the Megaplex. Those were my top Disney Channel Halloween kind of creepy movies. I loved those. Anyone else? Like, let me know what your favorites were. So I'm gonna head into the library, see if I can check out any Halloween-y movies. What's your favorite non-Disney, like actual creepy, scary movie? Let me know down there. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye y'all.